After 21 grueling races, the TM Master Cup Series makes its way back to Central Illinois here at the Decatur Raceway. Here's the circuit map as you see here. Turns 1 and 2, fairly straightforward. The Girard Strait going under the hotel, down to Tyson's Bend, which is actually like a speedway corner. It's got some banking in it. The climb up the hill, uh, turns 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Then there's a garbage dump turn, turn 11, named after the, named after the fact that uh, that's a landfill up there. Uh, going, uh, the descent is a bit more downhill, down to 12. Farmer Strait, we've seen a lot of incidents um, over there in practice. A lot of cars running wide, actually. Uh, in turn 12, uh, through turns 13 and 14, there's been um, some minor changes, uh, some minor changes to uh, the pit lane entry. Uh, there's been, there's some anxiety about this being the last time the series races here, possibly, and I think that would be a bit of a shame. But um, I think uh, we'll see the Decatur Raceway back next season, without a doubt in my mind. Dan, off to you. Thank you, Lance. The field of 42 was set by three grueling qualifying sessions. All the title protagonists qualified for the race. Winning a Delano Pole Award is Benoit Vukler, taking the pole away from the man who won this race and the championship last year, Adrian Devereaux, car number one. In row number two, Radimir Stanyachev and Luciano Savaral in car number three. Savaral's last race for the hottest Walter team. Scott Bates and Danny Savin are both former winners of the race. Scott Bates in that 88 car, very quick in final practice. Look out for him. Zelda Ashby is the highest place to the three title protagonists. Peter Short running his last race for Black Diamond Racing. Row number five, Brandon LaRoe, who won the pole here last year. Landon Roderick has won more races at this track than any other driver in series history. You have Jenny Kuznetsov and Ian Cooper fill out row six. Kuznetsov, very much a fan favorite going for Rookie of the Year. Melanie Klebno won last year's Rookie of the Year, and Alexis Rainsford won this race in the championship back in 2010. Packer Carroll in car number two is his last race for Volpe and possibly Lewis Kingston's last race for Nomoto. Row 9, Avery Holtzman puts quick fit in the race, and Arto Kakinen in his Gessler. Row 10, Rachel Rainsford, and Eric Drake Ryder makes his series debut driving for Packer Carroll in a Volpe-powered Omeka. Row 11 sees David Kerkorian in car 66, and Morgan Le Fay in the World Soft car. Michael Sykes is the points leader entering this race, on his outside Lev Azarov in the 82 Riz Autosport ride. Gaspar D'Souza made his debut here, and Lena Chernov of Ukraine in car number 80. Giovanni Rota in the 227 car, teammate to the pole sitter alongside Yamino Tenshi in the midnight. Row 15, Jose Luis Martinez, the Mexican hero, and White Castle makes his series debut in car 224. Matthias Taub is the third of the, of the championship protagonists, all the way back here in 31st place, and Kurt Pliskin's Lycoya. Chris Davenport in the Alert Inglesby, car number 6, and Tom Delgado's Lennard in car 37. Kevin Dwyer, car number 72, his last race for the Michelin Suns team. Greg Woodard in car 41 on his outside. Davina Henton, the Cariola Grand Prix winner, all the way back here in row 19, along with Kerry Eans making a series debut. Kazuyama makes his, potentially his last start for Nomoto, and Troy Adams may be looking for a ride next year. And Alessandro Rossini and Mika Ranton and two outsiders who made the field for the round of Decatur to complete this 42 car field. And so it begins. Benoit Vukler leads the field to the green. Vukler gets a good start. Roderick's already switching lanes in the back as Laroe makes uh, looks like he sticks his nose out. Coming into turn one, Stanyachev in the 307 car got a terrible run through one and two. He's jamming up the field, it looks like, a little bit. But it looks like everyone got to the first two corners mostly cleanly. We're riding on board with Matthias Taub, the Swede, who led the championship by over two races uh, at some point earlier in the year. Uh, coming into Australia, going by Wyatt Castle. Castle giving him a lot of room. Taub it sticks his nose in. There's Martinez in the in the very familiar Alex Harrison co colors. As we're going now under the hotel on this number 10. Oh, we got trouble ahead of him. That's one of the Rosada Sport cars. Gaspar D'Souza, look out, look out. Azarov and Yamino Tenchi is out of it. That's big disappointment. The midnight is out with Yamino Tenchi at the wheel. Car number 25 and Gaspar D'Souza in trouble right in front of one of the title protagonists. Taub needs to get... Needs to hustle to the front of the field in order to have a shot at winning this championship. He's got about 30 points to make up, so he's got a ways to go. Adrian Devereaux, car number one, now having a look on Benoit Vukler. Vukler, very much an outsider. 
to win uh, to get into the race won the pole pretty much the same situation last year and uh, he's got a lot of much faster cars right behind him both the hottest Walter cars here's Ian Cooper car triple seven I would keep an eye out for both the EFR cars Scott Bates had a had an amazing start there Gaspar de Souza enters the pits and we got a spin in the back we got a spin in the back as Ian Cooper's having a good start. We're looking on board the rear the rear camera now of car number 10. We're on board with Matthias Taub. Looking back at uh, Chernov and the zero car Martinez got onto the curb and it looked like he lost control of it right behind Taub. So Matthias Taub in the wars already. I think, uh, well anyways, Benoit Vukler in car 228 is looking for a full-time ride for, the, for next season. Uh, Katsev and um, uh, Owen DeGarmo have been very interested in his money talent. <clears throat> Sorry, uh, but Vukler does have uh, he does have uh, some results to uh, to his name. This is a pretty good showing. He had a couple runs with Tutino early in the year. He goes wide and Tyson's Ben. He gets hooked by Devereaux. Devereaux turns. Ben will Vukler around. Oh no, Adrian Devereaux, what are you doing, son? Devereaux got into the back of Vukler and. Uh, under investigation, we see. Well, we'll have to see how far that goes. But Benoit Vukler had a, it was starring up until about 15 seconds ago. Here we have Benoit Vukler coming into Tyson's. He's going wide. He's going wide off the course, and Adrian Devereaux doesn't really give him enough room. There's real, there's really no other way to put that. There, Devereaux was just squeezing him out under the grass pra uh, practically with the line he was choosing. Um, so, I'm not quite sure what was going on there. The Hot is Walter crew is pretty furious with Benoit Vukler's driving. Um, frankly, I'm not quite sure what they have to be too upset about. And looking a bit further back in the field, and oh, oh, we got contact! That's Chris Davenport, typically! Davenport got into Woodard, and somebody else is in it. Uh, I couldn't tell who the other car is. It looked like a black car that went off the road. And, uh... Chris Davenport not happy with Greg Woodard, uh, who apparently squeezed him over into the wall. Um, and, well, <laughs> says enough about how the officials thought about it. Leonid Roderick and Radimir Stanyachev doing battle now. Stanyachev cuts the curve into Roderick! Stanyachev not playing nice early. Radimir Stanyachev has got a ways to go if he's going to learn courtesy. Stanyachev's moving over! He's moving over, and Roderick and Stanyachev! Make contact, Stanyachev's around! Leonid Roderick, not terribly happy, I would imagine, in car number four, because that was kind of a ridiculous maneuver. Stanyachev, I don't... That was fucking bullshit. Did you guys see that? And I'm not surprised. Stanyachev, I think, should have known that Roderick was pretty clean alongside him, and that Stanyachev just moved over on him. That was, um... And this is at the same time, looks like another view... Oh! Oh, Danny Sovin! Danny Sovin! Oh, Ashby! Zelda Ashby in the 55! Ashby could steal this championship away, but was nearly wiped out in a near-identical incident. We've got an onboard camera on the 55 car, and we're going to have a look at that. Ashby in the 55 needs to finish in the top five to have a shot at the championship with Sykes scoring no points. There's the 12 of Melanie Klimno, the 81 of Danny Savin, and we can't really see much here. But I think Danny Savin thought he was clear. That was Danny Savin, I don't think, quite even had a bumper on Klimno, and they made contact there. Surprisingly, no action taken. As we see here, there, it is possible to have clean racing here as the EFR boys are battling for fifth. Scott Bates and Ian Cooper, two very, very evenly matched men on track on this particular circuit. Here's Michael Sykes, the points leader coming into this race, running in 15th place. Now, with all the dramas that have happened to Taub, well, I see Taub in the background. Taub is really making some headway. There's Eric Drake Ryder in the 142 behind Brandon LaRoe, who has made a terrible start, but LaRoe driving a smart race. LaRoe trying to impress for next season, not trying to get in anyone's way as Sykes loses it a bit. Drake Ryder in the 142, Holding station there, there's Gregorian right there in the 66 car. Michael Sykes, Eric Drake Riders. They approach Tyson's bend. Drake Rider into Sykes. Sykes around. LaRoe, big contact. LaRoe is in it. Michael Sykes, the championship leader. Taken out by Eric Drake Rider, who had no business making that maneuver. 
I'm not quite sure what was going on there, but it looked like Drake Rider moved over on, moved into Michael Sykes in the middle of a straightaway. That seemed uh, rather insane, to be honest. Round board with David Krikorian as Drake Rider's already forcing his way through. Now the racing line into Tyson's Bend is very narrow, even though that turn is very wide. Drake Rider moves over into the five car and just takes him out. That's not only the championship leader that he just wiped out. Well, Sykes is going to continue, but he took him into the, into the sand. But Drake Rider is not exactly known for being very courteous on the racetrack anyway. Um, it seems that uh, even people that Packer Carroll hires seem to drive like this the same way that he does. So, Eric Drake Rider, complete lunatic out there right now. Meanwhile, someone who's driving like a lunatic but is actually uh, impressing some people is Alexis Rainsford, who has been muscling her way up to sixth place in car number 27. This is the quickest car on the racetrack by about half a second. I'm not quite sure what um, Alexis Rainsford has been doing with this car, but uh, there are some there are some indications that she wasn't exactly sharing her setup notes with Matthias Taub or Arto Kekkonen. Uh, to say that Rainsford has been a little difficult to work with over at the Gessler camp this weekend would be an understatement. Here are the two Volpe mates, uh, at least two of the three, Leonard Roderick and Packer Carroll. They haven't always gotten along on track, but this week seems to be a bit of a change. They seem to be working together quite well, actually. Uh, Roderick uh, being more supportive of Packer Carroll uh, in his bid to finally get a win before he leaves Volpe. And oh no, Peter Short and Packer Carroll! Oh no, Carroll rolls it in a spectacular accident! We've seen a lot of... Oh, no, that's the other Rusada sport car. Azarov, Bliskin is in it, and Melanie Cleave now. Packer Carroll, though. Oh, my goodness. That was... That's definitely a spectacular exit to his tenure over at Volpe. He's right on board with Peter Short, who has a huge run at him coming under the hotel. And I don't... Oh, I didn't think Peter Short misjudged that. I think he misjudged that a little bit. Carroll rolled it. I'm a little surprised he did that, but we've seen a lot of spectacular incidents going into Tyson's Bend previously. And now we're on board with Melanie Cleveno in car number 12, the Swiss sophomore who's moving over to Hottest Walter next year. That's Kurt Pliskin right in front of her. And there you see, there's Carroll rolling it. Nowhere for Cleveno or Kurt Pliskin to go, really. Um, really, they couldn't... I'm, I'm surprised Melanie or Kurt Pliskin was even able to see that because... Uh, see that one coming because these cockpits are fairly low. Running order on the left side. Still no judgment on, on uh, Adrian Devereaux, but Luciano Savaral leads this race. Hodges Walter Racing went 1-2 in this race last year, with Adrian Devereaux beating Luciano Savaral in a race that decided the championship. So, uh, points battle I don't think maybe as close as it was last year because Michael Sykes is way down in the running order. And uh, looks like uh, Taub is working his way up through the field, and Ashby is holding station. Here we have the battle for seventh right now between um, Lewis Kingston and Arto Kakinen. Uh, Kakinen's going to have a new teammate next year because Matthias Taub is leaving Gessler for uh, the new Melrose team. Oh, Kingston muscling his way through. Lewis Kingston, the Avenger, not one of the men you really want to be playing around with on the racetrack. Here we have Avery Holtzman running in a very respectable 12th place, running right behind Rachel Rainsford, and yes, Matthias Taub is slowly working his way into contention here. This is a great drive from Taub so far, and if Taub keeps this drive up, he could win the championship. Avery Holtzman looking to extend a Dash Cup career, possibly, to continue racing in Europe. As we're on board of the Lexus Rainsford, oh, well, that's, well, that's Eric Drake Rider being a moron again, what a surprise. All over the place. There are some complaints about him in practice. Eric Drake Rider, car 142, not earning himself any friends at all. He hadn't exactly earned any friends in the paddock either with some of his um, interesting social media posts. Troy Adams running up in 23rd and coming. Whoa, whoa, with contact with Danny Savin. Hang on to it there, Sunshine. Troy Adams, you know, he's a rookie, and for a rookie as old as he is, he's done a pretty good job. It's uh, there's a lot of the rookies we've had lately are very, very young, but Troy Adams, much the opposite. He's a much, much older driver, much more, ex much, be, uh, much more experienced, just not in this form of racing. And Michael Sykes, you see here, all the way back in 35th place. It's going to be a long day for him, and he could still win this championship. He entered this race as the points leader, remember. But he's being very courteous as a backmarker, very gentlemanly as a backmarker. Michael Sykes has won races and championships in most every category he's competed in. This is his final Master Cup Series start. 
He is retiring after the end of this race, and uh, he wants to go out on a bang, but unfortunately, um, well, he had a different kind of bang. As Alexis Rainsford is moving around Ian Cooper. Now that's two drivers that are very bold. Ian Cooper normally with defensive driving, but Cooper just let Rainsford go. And I wonder if that's because uh, he might want to have a pounce back at Rainsford when they come back on lap traffic. But Rainsford also has been known to stick her nose in where it doesn't belong sometimes. Here's Arto Kekkonen doing battle now with Avery Holtzman as Kekkonen has gone off the track and slid backwards a bit. Kekkonen on the outside. Oh, contact! Contact with Holtzman! Kekkonen and Holtzman are both up, but they save it! Both these guys save it! And that looked like kind of a racing incident because I think Kekkonen was anticipating Holtzman going off the road. Either that or he just ran into the back of Holtzman. Um, but it didn't look, it didn't look like any, anything intentional there as we saw a clip of Ashby. And now we're on board with Matthias Talbot. He's going on the Lewis Kingston. That's uh, Kuznetsov in the Katsev right there. And oh, Kingston in the cat, into the Katsev. Lewis Kingston into the back of Yevgeny Kuznetsov. This one has been an absolute contact festival as uh, Kuznetsov and Kingston kept it going. Kingston let him keep the spot. Surprisingly gentlemanly from, um, from the Illinoisan. Tom Delgado in car number 37. Normally the man I would expect to be in these kind of brawls. He's a former middleweight boxer, car number 37. But Morgan Le Fay in car number 343 uh, used, to be a, uh, used to be a magician actually in her spare time uh, from what we understand. So Morgan Le Fay and Tom Delgado, two of the more colorful characters. Morgan Le Fay's career just starting. Tom Delgado, he's been around for a little while, has two wins, but Ocean Motorsports, this is, they said, this is their last race. Here is Troy Adams in the 18, Chris Davenport in the 6. Not a battle for position, but Adams has been in the pit lane already for uh, to repair some damage that he had from... Oh, no! Adams off the road! Davenport got into the back of a car he was not racing for position with! Oh, Chris, what were you doing there, son? Troy Adams' his season ends against the guardrail in a massive crash, but Troy Adams was able to get out of the car. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Chris Davenport. Well, oh, whoa, whoa! That's Rachel Rainsford and uh, Lewis Kingston doing battle for eighth. Oh, these two have a feud that goes back a long ways. Back since 2007, where they got into it a grand detour, most uh, infamously in Quincy. But um, Arto Kakinen now having a run on Kingston, but uh, Rachel Rainsford and Lewis Kingston not playing nice. That's Benoit Vukler, the pole sitter that they're lapping right now in the 228 car. Kingston's going to lose two positions from roughing up a former rival of his. And here is Matthias Taub sitting in the top 10. Taub needs to make a couple more positions up and then... He has to deal with Zelda Ashby. No, no, actually, Ashby's directly in front of him. So, oh, we got all sorts of fun and games going on up there. Zelda Ashby and, um, thought I saw someone else, maybe not. Battle for a third. Alexis Rainsford and Scott Bates. Two of the most savvy drivers on the circuit. Scott Bates is going to throw a defensive move here. Very slow defensive move. That's fair game. Rainsford moves to the left in the snake. Scott Bates in the 88 hits the curb. Defending that position, very clean driving by both of them. I'm surprised Rainsford didn't stick that nose in a little further. As we have Arto Kakinen versus Rachel Rainsford, the elder Rainsford sister, and the Flying Finn. Kakinen, car number nine, making a move on the Aperture Science Volpe, but Rachel throws the block. A lot of great racing here with Arto Kakinen in the mix and Rachel Rainsford, but a lot of contact as well. Uh, a lot of fair contact, I think. Uh, none of it um, is intended to be unsportsmanly, uh, uh, from what I can tell. As the hottest Walter cars that have been running first and second and have been holding station for the most part have caught Alessandro Rossini making his last start for Tutino before he moves over to Volpe next year. Rossini, now if you want to talk about if you want to talk about guys having a good time there, as, as Devereaux takes the lead, look no further than Scuderia Tutino. They had over they had half the garage getting that 42 car ready to run just so that it could start this race. Great effort by the entire Master Cup Series community. In fact, many people from other teams are helping get that 42 car ready to go. That's how well liked Tutino is in the pit lane, even though they have very few good results. As Adrian Devereaux pitched in the lead on lap 12 of this 36 lap race. In the driver's meeting, people were warned about cutting it too close to the left side of the pit lane because of the uh, speed limit detection point. 
where pit speed limit takes effect. The Scott Bates pits the 88. Everyone else looks like they're pitting except Alexis Rainsford in car 27, who appears to be the only car to be staying out. Uh, Rainsford trying to make some fuel here in this uh, 27 car. This could be a huge gamble, and if it pays off, well, we could see a pretty big gain here. She's trying to put in a huge hot lap. She did this to win the Cariola Grand Prix a couple of years ago, as we're looking at Morgan Le Fay in car 343, making a move on the 19 car, looks like. That is uh, Azuma Kaziyama, who's making a great drive from the back of the field. As Oh, oh, the 11 car stayed out. Davina Henton has stayed out as well. So Davina Henton, another one of the queens of fuel mileage, is trying to, is going to go for it. Davina Henton's fuel economy, remember, is how she won the Cariola Grand Prix. And it's how she's made a lot of spectacular drives when she's qualified deep in the field. This has easily been one of the most impressive drivers of this season. But just too many other incidents and too many other things have gone wrong with Davina Henton's... Uh, Davina Henton's uh, title ambitions. She's nowhere near winning the championship, but she could finish in the top five in points. Alexis Rainsford is making up some impressive time. As you can see, she's already caught the 42 car of Rossini. Rossini lets her go by, gives him a thank you for the wave there, and Rainsford going past. And now she is going to enter the pits this time, and here comes the 27. We could be seeing Rainsford in as many as five races in 2014. And um, I think it'd be uh, interesting to see what this year's Indy 500 winner could do against these boys uh, a bit more regularly. Former two-time Master Cup Drivers Champion, Alexis Rainsford, as she leaves the pits. Now, where is she going? There's Adrian Devereaux. Now, he's the race leader, so Rainsford's going to come out in second. Alexis Rainsford with a huge fuel gamble. Wow, and a great pit stop. Fantastic pit work from uh, the Gessler-Richter team to put her out right in between the Hottest Walter boys. Oh boy, we got Alexis Rainsford versus Hodges Walter Racing. This is going to get good. As now they're going to let Benoit Vukler. Henton, on the other hand, not such a good pit stop. Great fuel economy from Henton in the 11, but unfortunately, uh, well, when you have a bad pit stop, that doesn't really mean a whole lot. She's uh, pretty much right where she was beforehand, but we know that Henton has a fast car, and she is one of the most determined and dogged drivers on the circuit. There you see the leaderboard on the left. Giovanni Rota in car 227 is made. Oh, he's going off the road there in Tyson's. But uh, Rota, whoa, we got contact in the back. But Rota's making an impressive run so far today. We'll have a look at that, what we saw in the back. He's having a solid day running up in, uh, you saw there in the leaderboard, looked like 12th. Here is uh, Tom Delgado, Davina Henton. Oh, Henton into the back, and Delgado, hang on to it, hang on to it, Tom. Oh, he tried. He tried. Tom Delgado got mugged. There's no two-way. I don't think there's any two ways about it. Henton had a lot of momentum going in there. I think if she would have let off, that would have, that could have been worse. But at the same time, Delgado, I think, got mugged. Here's Kerry Eans in the 116 car. This car, when it qualified, was this horrendous shade of green with those sponsors, which didn't work at all. They had a used car. Uh, they brought it here, and they're doing, he's doing very, very well with it, actually. Kerry Eans, the Spannerhead Racing Team, uh, that's a pretty good debut. Melanie Cleve, now you saw her listed very high in the scoreboard. That was because uh, she hadn't pitted yet, or had her hadn't pitted a, a second time, because she's already pitted once for damage. And speaking of having fantastic drives, let's look at Matthias Taub, car number 10, going for the Master Cup Championship. He's moving over to Vernstrom. They've reportedly thrown a rather large check at him to get him to drive for him. But Matthias Taub is definitely one of the best drivers on the circuit. Otherwise, he wouldn't be uh, he wouldn't be in contention for a championship. He's up in sixth. Here's first, second, and third. Nose to tail. Adrian Devereaux, Alexis Rainsford, and Luciano Savarol. Rainsford no longer a regular in the series in that silver and orange car. Making a run on Adrian Devereaux's blue and orange car. And then there's Luciano Savarol in that usual green that we've associated him with. There's Rainsford going for the lead in Tyson's. Devereaux going to try to get, get a bit more momentum. Oh, Devereaux throws the block on his teammate. Devereaux and Savarol, they're racing really hard. There are no team orders. I think that's gone out the window. Devereaux wants to win this race. Luciano's probably furious, but the Hodges-Walter cars almost wadded each other up. And here's the team EFR boys showing that, yes, you can have close, clean racing between teammates. Looks like Ian Cooper might actually just be kind of waiting behind the 88 car for a little bit because he's he's been able to catch Scott Bates, 
We haven't seen that 777 car stick out and make a move yet. Here is Kerry Ians in the 116 behind Avery Holtzman in the 158 car. Two one-off guys having a pretty good run, surviving the carnage. That was the first third of this race, and that's Morgan Le Fay making a pretty good start here. And let's have a shout out to Wyatt Castle in car 224. This is Wyatt Castle's first ever Master Cup start. He's been rumored to a few TM Lights rides. He's got some racing experience in other in other lower categories, but he's made a huge, huge impression, especially with his sponsor, McWendy King. Hopefully we'll see them in uh, TM Lights or something next year. And here's Gaspar D'Souza, who made his debut here back in, I do believe, 09. As Rainsford trying to lap the young Portuguese driver. D'Souza, I'm kind of surprised he wasn't able to snag a win this year, but granted, um, if, you, if I don't think too many drivers had as disastrous of a mid part of the season as he did. And uh, Rainsford being patient behind D'Souza. The Hot as Walter cars don't look like they're being quite as patient. Rainsford waiting, waiting. D'Souza moves over in front of the one car, leaving the line open for the 27. But can you believe this kind of racing we're seeing here? D'Souza's kind of getting in the way here. Devereaux, I think, is probably going to shove him wide if he keeps running the way he is. Ian Cooper has gotten by Scott Bates in the background. And now, coming down the main straightaway. And here we have Ian Cooper and Scott Bates. Bates has gotten by Cooper again. Bates has gotten around Ian Cooper in the 88 car. So we've got a good battle between teammates here. Cooper setting up Bates. The Oklahoma native Scott Bates trying to hold off his much younger teammate. Bates goes wide. Cooper sticks it in. Ian Cooper just gives Scott Bates enough room, but Scott Bates is able to use it and hold on, but Cooper takes the place anyway. Scott Bates and Ian Cooper putting on a great show there. Oh, good display there as they run fourth and fifth. This is a fantastic showing. These cars always seem to do well in the special events. When the pressure turns up, their game steps up. Morgan Le Fay now trying to do a magic trick on Avery Holtzman to make him disappear. Here comes Kerry Eans in the 116. Le Fay goes wide. Kerry Eans takes it in. Kerry Eans into Morgan Le Fay. Morgan Le Fay off, into, off the road as Kerry Eans just drove straight into the back of Le Fay's car. Morgan Le Fay nowhere really to go, but she kept it going. As Holtzman goes off, Le Fay goes off. Kerry Eans. Did not give LeFay any opportunity to get back on track at all. Morgan LeFay got mugged from 10th place. Big disappointment for the World Soft team, for the WYSIWYG World Soft team. Mikko Rantanen is this uh, white car here, car 770. He started dead last. He's using an old FAC Motorsports car with some body modifications to it. Not surprised. And uh, Mikko Rantanen is running very, very well. Started last. Barely made it into the race, and now he's having a run. And trying to have a run of Jenny Kuznetsov. He did pit a lap early. He's up in 16th. Here we're on board with Arto Kekkonen behind Morgan LeFay. LeFay limping back to the pit lane, and Kekkonen into the back of LeFay, and almost taking out Giovanni Rota. I would expect that's going to be looked. Yep, that's going to be looked at later. Arto Kekkonen, car number nine, shoves Morgan LeFay off the road. Morgan Le Fay had a damaged car, so here's uh, Azuma Kazuyama and Lewis Kingston now. These two cars are racing for position. Kingston off the road in the 17 car. So Lewis Kingston trying to get, trying to get, some, I wonder if something's wrong with the 17 car. Because Kingston falling back. Nomoto got all three cars into the race. This could be their last ever start, at least as star Nomoto. Uh, we're not sure what's going on there. Ah, lover's quarrels. Chris Davenport is married to Alexis Rainsford, the race leader. This could get interesting. Oh, Davenport really had nowhere to go there. I don't think he could have gone anywhere because you're not allowed to cut the track there under any circumstances unless you're spinning, basically. But Chris Davenport, uh, really nowhere to cut. The leaders caught him in the worst possible spot. Even though Chris Davenport is not the cleanest driver anyway, Alexis Rainsford getting a good run. And Davenport swings it wide to let the leaders go through as best he can. That's probably the best thing he could have done in that position, which is surprising for me to, to say the words. Chris Davenport made a smart decision because he's not known for making too many of those. As, uh, ironically enough, he did win a race at Quincy this year where he was really the only person to make a smart decision in that race. Funny how these things work out sometimes. 
Now, the leaders are coming to lap. Uh, Peter Short in the 22 down. Farmer straight. Not really a straight. Oh, Peter Short getting in the way a little bit. I think he could have let the leaders go there. He is racing Davenport technically, but that's only if Davenport has both his time penalties wiped, and that I think means that Peter Short is te technically a lap in front of him. Given the way these uh, given the way these uh, the times are here, as Rainsford and Savarall go past the lead, go past the stripe. Here's Benoit Vukler in the 228 car. His day is. I really do feel bad for Benoit Vukler to be honest. And oh, contact with Rontanen. I don't think Vukler was expecting that, or Rontanen really. It looked like Rontanen's car developed a bit of push there. Vukler is trying to give him give way. Rontanen trying to go by as Rontanen pits. But Rontanen is pitting one, been regularly pitting one lap before the rest of the leaders. I think that is a. I think that's too early. Rainsford and Savarall stay out. Devereaux stays out. Peter Short, not a factor at all. Where's the EFR cars? Cooper is pitting. Ian Cooper in the 777 car is pitting early. He doesn't want to pit with his teammate. Cooper trying to avoid a pit lane uh, accident. We've seen enough of those here over the years, even though this is the widest pit lane on the calendar. Savarall and Rainsford do battle with the lap car of Melanie Klevno. Klevno, one of Rainsford's good friends, one of Savarall's good friends. A lot of camaraderie here in the Master Cup paddock. Clevno trying to get um, off the out of the leader's way, but uh, they're not exactly alongside her. Uh, Clevno yet. This would be a good place for Clevno to move over. And she does. Clevno waves them through. Savarall makes a bit three wide. Oh, that could have ended in tears. Melanie Clevno that did the right thing there. And the, whoa, Devereaux pits. Devereaux pits the one car. He still has a time penalty, possibly headed his way. But Rainsford leads still. Savarall stays out. Scott Bates pits the 88 car. So, this is a thriller so far as Rainsford in the 27. Now pulling away from Savarall. Both these cars are scheduled in at the end of this lap. Kazuyama's leaving the pit lane in car 19. And uh, who's that up ahead? It's hard to make out who that is. Taub has just pitted the 10. Matthias Taub. Car number 10 is pitted. We haven't been focusing much on the championship battle because of how me Ashby is pitted. Taub has beat Ashby out of the pits. So, with the way this title is going, Matthias Taub could walk into the championship and take the number one to another team. Here is Drake Ryder in the 142 getting in his way. This is going to hugely benefit the 55. Zelda Ashby driving for FPO Incorporated. With all the troubles they have had this year, all the problems on and off track, they could be the first team in the modern era to win the championship in their first attempt. Ashby in the 55, a heroic effort all season. Ashby is off, trying to get by the 10. This is the battle for the championship between these two cars, but it hasn't really erupted until now. Rainsford pits, Savarall pits with her. Cars 27 and 3, they both swing it wide entering the pits. Rainsford coming into the pits, they touch, they touch! Rainsford and Savarall into the pit lane. That is a collision technically inside the pit lane. That's going to be a penalty for somebody. Rainsford is livid about this on the radio. She's pulling the 27 car out of the race. Savarall, Luciano Savarall, car number three. Big controversy here. He's not giving her any room to come back off the grass. And Savarall and Rainsford crash coming into Miko Rontanen's pit box. So. Uh, here's the aerial view. Can you believe this? Rainsford and Savarall. There's Savarall. He's not giving her any room really to move over. And that's where the pit lane entrance is. That's a hard one to call, I think. I don't... I think that might be more on Luciano because you're not... You're not allowed to run drivers off the pit lane once they've committed a pit lane entry like that. Because, uh... Well... That seemed... Oh, oh, Ian's... Gary Ian's and Holtzman together. Holtzman saves it. Avery Holtzman, great driving there. But Gary Ian's already got a time penalty. I'd let him go. Here's Adrian Devereaux, car number one, who should be leading this race right now in um, rather easily. In... Uh-oh. Oh, no. They've called that incident uh, from earlier in the race. For that collision with Benoit Vukler, they've called it against Adrian Devereaux. Savarall is now leading the race by a fairly significant margin now over Team EFR. Here's Melanie Klevno in car number 12, chasing uh, Michael Sykes in the 5, 
And that is for position, I do believe. Clevno uh, coming. Oh, contact! Clevno off the road! It's first car to hit those signs all race. And um, we have yet to hear anything. Oh! Oh, no! Luciano Savarol has gotten a time penalty! Scott Bates is leading the race! Time penalties handed out with less than five minutes apart to both the Hodges Walter racing cars. And this is going to put Team EFR in first and second. Can you believe it? Here's Chris Davenport trying to take up a career in landscaping. At least he kept it out of the sand trap. But uh, Scott Bates and Ian Cooper are going to be the battle for the win. These two cars are the most evenly matched two cars on the racetrack, and now they're going to be the battle for the win. But what you may have also noticed is that, oh, as Davenport muscles his way past Scott Bates, I think Bates let him go, but here comes the triple seven for the race, for the race lead. Ian Cooper having a run on Scott Bates. But what this is going to do, it is going to move the battle for the championship uh, between Taub and Ashby. That is going to be... Whoever wins that battle for position between Taub and Ashby will win the championship. But we've got a battle for the lead. Same maneuver as he did earlier. Ian Cooper really likes coming up the hill here. As Ian Cooper now takes the lead. Scott Bates fighting back. The Oklahoma driver. The car number 88. Fighting back on the inside and top of the hill. Trying to hold off Ian Cooper. He's going to do it for now. But here they come into the garbage dump. This right-hand corner here. Scott Bates slides it out a bit wide, and Ian Cooper takes the lead in car triple seven. This battle between cars 10 and 55 will settle the championship. Matthias Taub versus Zelda Ashby. Michael Sykes is way out of it. This is, this is it. The battle for the championship is with these two cars. We still have the battle for the win to settle, but Ashby making a look. Ashby has a look on Taub, who shuts the door a little bit. Matthias Taub trying to take number one over to Melrose Racing Team. Zelda Ashby wants number one for herself as she tries to continue her Master Cup Series career. FPO not likely to return, but I would be surprised if that familiar 55 is not on the grid and a top ride next year because Ashby has been one of the most dogged, determined, and persistent drivers all year. She leads the series with top 10 finishes. One win in New York. Coming on Taub in the snake. That's a gutsy move. Ashby gives him a little bit of a piece of her mind as she comes on by. Taub in car number 10. They're coming under the hotel. And here they come. Oh no, Taub is running her off the road. No, can you believe it? Matthias Taub and Zelda Ashby. They've thrown it away down in turn number 3. Matthias Taub. Try to turn Ashby off the road. I cannot believe what I have seen. Taub, he stalled it. Taub has stalled it. Ashby continues on. <clears throat> Matthias Taub, car number 10. <clears throat> Let Ashby go by. The 55 has been faster. He just moved over to the right and just straight took the 55 car out. There's no two ways about it. He tried to get away with it himself, but they're both off the road. And the stewards, I think, are in agreement on that one with me, as you can see right there. But Matthias Taub, that was a daring maneuver that he attempted to do to try to turn Ashby clean off the road to try to win the championship. And Taub in car number 10, not earning himself any fans at all with that maneuver, that's for sure. Ashby still has to finish, very, still has to finish basically on the podium and this is going to be a this is going to be probably the greatest thing that's ever happened in Michael Sykes's whole career Michael Sykes car number five I don't think has been told yet what's going on and if he did tell him I don't think he would believe what he I don't think he would believe his ears Michael Sykes car number five if Ashby is not able to make up enough points will win the championship because he entered as the leader. Giovanni Rota, car 227, is showing what speed Benoit Vugler had in that Altalia car. They have an identical setup. Rota, the more experienced Altalia driver, having a fantastic showing here today. But it's been over, it's been, um, been sort of uh, underscored a bit by a lot of more significant events on track. 
Yevgeny Kuznetsov in car number eight is in a really, really uh, intense battle for Rookie of the Year with Chris Davenport and Ebenezer Quiggles Jr. Kuznetsov could win that battle with this result he could get. Mikko Rantanen, car 770. May not be able to make the rest of the way on fuel, but this is a stellar drive from, uh, from Rantanen, who's only really known for his exploits over in East Europe, and particularly in uh, Scandinavia and his native Finland. Big pat on the back to Rus Autosport. Dogged performance is going to get them points here again. As Scott Bates is losing ground to Ian Cooper because of some lap traffic. Uh, not really a whole lot Scott Bates can really do. Oh, they, no! No, Peter Short and Martinez get together right in front of the 88. Scott Bates almost lost that second place. And I guarantee you this took him by surprise. Peter Short, car 22, gets into the zero. Martinez, he did the same thing earlier. It's the exact same thing that happened almost with Packer Carroll, but Martinez, Martinez, I think, knew that was going to happen, and I think he tried to back out of it, but, um, oh, Rantanen is going to have to pit. Rantanen is going to have to pit from 10th, as Rantanen, car 770, is going to lose a top 10 run, we think. And uh, there's so many penalties that could be handed out. We don't know the final results yet. This could yet change. Here is car number 14, Rachel Rainsford, who is having a very strong, solid run. This is a podium run from the... Oh, no, she turned Vukler! Benoit Vukler cut off Rachel Rainsford, but I would expect a penalty there if Vukler was a lead lap car. The series has not generally thrown out time penalties for collisions with lap cars. Rachel Rainsford in car 14... Cuts inside Vukler, and I'd have to say Rachel Rainsford is the guilty party there, but well, the series is not normally given out a penalty for a collision like that involving a lapped car, but Ian Cooper, car number 777, comes off the final corner, steals the final race of the year with a win at Decatur. Scott Bates comes home in second, no penalty given to Rachel Rainsford as she holds on for the final podium spot. Wow, what a way to end the season. Adrian Devereaux would have come in first had he not gotten that time penalty earlier. And Davina Hinton, no penalty handed out to, uh, to Davina Hinton for that collision with Tom Delgado. Giovanni Roda, pat on the back to the Italian for getting into the points. Luciano Savarol, well, I think he's going to be regretting that collision with Alexis Rainsford, otherwise he might have won this race. Uh, Avery Holtzman in the 158 car comes home eighth. Great job by Holtzman and by Lena Chernov, both of them driving one-off cars, and they managed to find their way into the top ten after this wild race. Roderick and Kakinen and a soldier through damage. Kevin Dwyer, great drive through the field, and Mikko Rantanen from last, bad pit strategy, and 15th place. Wyatt Castle had a smart debut, stayed out of everyone's way, came home 16th, eight points to Castle, hope to see him in TM Lights next year. Tom Delgado in Ocean Motorsports, a swan song 17th. Kerry Ians would have been, I do believe, 12th. Kazuyama and local boy Greg Woodard round out the points. Woodard uh, had a great showing here uh, in front of his home crowd, um, even though he did have a collision with Chris Davenport in the opening lap. As you may have noticed, none of the main points contenders finished in the points, so as a result, Michael Sykes, in his final TM Master Cup Series start, walks away with the championship, coming, uh, coming across the line 30th after... A very, very rough day. But Matthias Taub and Zelda Ashby tripped over each other after that uh, questionable piece of driving by Taub. Adrian Devereaux wound up fourth in the championship. This is actually his worst performance when he's been running the full season. Can you believe that? Second and then two firsts for Devereaux. He's going to lose the number one for next season. Davina Henton had a respectable showing. Roderick, Bates, Sabaral all had fairly good seasons. Along with Arto Kakinen and Melanie Cleave. No, the Lynx girls really made the most of that. Uh, um, not necessarily the best equipment, but they certainly did a lot with what they had. D'Souza impressed with 11th in the championship. Kingston uh, did very well in the 17. And uh, Kurt Pliskin also did very well in that uh, often problematic Lycoya. Despite not even running the last four races because she was sacked by her team, Yulia Nosova still finished one point ahead of her teammate uh, for most of the year. You have Jenny Kuznetsov. Peter Short had a respectable run through this year for the former world champion. However, um, we're not sure what he's up to next year. Zach Duff and Kevin Dwyer were the stealth bombers of the year. Duff consistently scoring in the lower points, and Kevin Dwyer 
uh, knows how to steal the headlines when needed. Chris Davenport was doing that sometimes for the wrong reasons, but he came home with a win and a third, so that put him 19th in the championship. And Yamino Tenchi ran, ran exactly half the races, but made the most out of what the Midnight was capable of to get 20th in the championship. At this time, we would like to spotlight four other awards that have been handed out after the end of this race. First of which is the Rookie of the Year Award. And this might come as a surprise, but Chris Davenport beat Yevgeny Kuznetsov to take Rookie of the Year by only a handful of points, Davenport's win being the deciding factor there. Next is the Independence Trophy winner. This was decided at uh, the HLR circuit. Ben Huron, driving the Abbey Engineering Huntley, in their first season, takes home the Independence Trophy. The next award is the Southern Hemisphere Sweeper, the best performance in the three races in the Southern Hemisphere, and that goes to the, the series champion, Michael Sykes, driving for alert. And the final award we are going to hand out is the QQQ Royalty Award, best performance in, Qu in Quebec, Quincy, and Queensland. Luciano Savarol, the recipient there. Interesting award that. Well, after 22 races, we have finally gotten to the end of the 2013 TM Master Cup Series season. We hope to see you again for the 2014 season as the stars and cars of the TM Master Cup Series lick their wounds, build better machinery, and hone their racecraft. I'll see you next time.